mixed bank earnings out today from Bank of America, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo. Stephen Bigger is director of financial institutions research at Argus Research and covers the sector. Uh, Stephen, good to see you this morning here. Uh, generally, the theme is that the banks have disappointed across the board, most notably uh, with their net interest margins. Any quarter stick out to you as being uh, pretty good and, and potentially uh, a good bank stock to own? Well, uh, thanks for having me on. And, and uh, I, th I think the, the quarter is, has been very mixed uh, so far. You know, we've got, um, you know, not, not the full set. And certainly we have, a, you know, the capital markets, heavy banks uh, report early in the cycle and a lot of cross currents there, uh, you know, some of which would have been expected. We had very strong investment banking revenues on the equity side, not, not good on the fixed income side. You know, trading revenues are down, as, uh, as you could expect, as volatility has, has, has been uh, reined in here. Um, and, uh, you know, lots of weakness uh, still on the uh, lending uh, side, which is, uh, you know, will get troublesome if it, if it moves into the latter half of the year here. And this net interest margin compression, you know, we would expect that the, we're now uh, beyond uh, a year in terms of the quarter when the uh, Fed first went to the zero bound. So, um, you know, things should start leveling off here. And uh, our expectation for the back half of the year is that we do get a little bit of lo uh, loan growth, that the uh, rolling off of the government stimulus measures, number one, uh, the enhanced unemployment benefits, uh, better jobs growth, you know, improving confidence, uh, people venturing out more, vacations and, you know, travel. And, um, you know, the, there has been some signs of life in credit cards and, and auto lending. Uh, and I think that that has to improve. I mean, even even if net interest margins move up, it doesn't do banks uh, a whole lot of good unless, you know, new loans come on the books that are at at higher rates. Um, so, you know, we've I, I think each of them has has had their uh, moments of, of weakness and strength in, in, in the banks that have reported so far. Uh, they're sort of playing to their strengths uh, in, in many of these releases. You know, Stephen, you mentioned that um, you know, loan growth is going to need to pick up here, but you know, you also note that charge-offs um, are, are continuing to be, uh, you know, pretty much as low as we've seen them. I mean, looking at Bank America's um, you know, results this morning, their commercial side, they hardly had any uh, in the most recent quarter. I mean, what do these banks need to see from consumers, from businesses, to try to extend more credit? Because it it seems like their customer base right now almost couldn't be in in better financial stead. I agree. Uh, consumer and the business balance sheets are, are just phenomenal. They're, they're flush with cash. Uh, you know, a lot of that was from uh, fantastic savings last year on the consumer side. There was nowhere, you know, you couldn't go out to eat, couldn't travel much. So, uh, you know, we saw that in the um, in the country savings rates. And um, so, you know, customers will uh, be wearing those off, uh, I think, before they, uh, you know, go go to the uh, bank for, uh, for loans. The same with uh, with uh, commercial customers, I took out a, a lot of loans last year uh, and basically stuck stuck it back in the bank as a, as a deposit, uh, just to ride through the downturn. So they've they've got to make use of that, uh, either you know spend it on uh, investing, uh, you know new new plants, uh, new people, new product, uh, you know before they need to go back for another round of of funding. So, you know I think I think the economy has to. Uh, just have its uh, have its growth uh, through you know through the balance of this year, and I think that lending will will come back. It's hard to see the economy you know growing uh, at the pace that we expect it to here. Uh, you know this kind of six percent range uh, for for the you know going into the, the the back half of the year, slowing of course to maybe three percent next year uh, without having uh, some some leverage uh, and with rates so low. Uh, and I, there's probably going to be a spurt. Uh, there as well before the you know there's uh, the Fed moves off that zero bound. Stephen, I, I was going through the quarter from from Wells Fargo, and and my my takeaway is that this bank may never turn around. Uh, do you think it will turn around in our lifetime? And, and what does a turnaround at Wells Fargo look like? Well, Wells is a you know is an interesting story. Obviously, they have the Fed cap uh, still in place, so they've got a, a cap on. You know their ability to grow uh, assets here, so they've they've had to do a lot of uh, you know finagling beneath the surface to to keep below that cap. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, I, I think the the cap has to be removed, and that and that could be a major catalyst uh, for the shares as well. Um, they have to get expenses down. They have mentioned that. Uh, you know, Charlie uh, Sharf, the 
CEO, you know, relatively new, has uh, has made a lot of uh, uh, you know progress on some of these initiatives. I, I think, though, it's it's going to take a few more quarters to show up in the in the earnings results here. So, you know, it's it's a big bank. It's it flows in the macro trends, particularly for uh, housing, major mortgage lender there. Uh, you know, they have a, a bit of a smaller uh, capital markets business than than does. You know, many of the whether it's uh, Bank of America or um, City, uh, Goldman, Mor- uh, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, certainly. Um, and, uh, you know, so so they're more uh, uh, problem, you know, it's more problematic when the lending business isn't cooperating uh, there. So, you know, expenses get the cap off uh, the asset cap from the Fed. And, um, you know, I think I think there's a there's a good underlying franchise story there. Uh, and that's uh, that's been behind the buy, and of course the stock has has rebounded, uh, you know, nicely here over, over the past year as well. And you know, Stephen, finally, before we let you go, I mean, we're certainly focused here, um, you know, down finance on on bigger names, big tickers. So the the big money center banks get a lot of attention from us as we move forward into earnings season. And it'll be mostly big tech, but on that back half, we're going to see a lot more um, smaller financial institutions come out with their results. Firms that don't have the kind of reserve release capacity that the big guys did to, to make the bottom line number and, you know, firms that rely a lot more on, on loan growth. Um, what's the outlook there as you, you think about, you know, smaller banks, more of the, the regional banks domestically levered? If we're seeing um, kind of NIM compression for the big guys, one, I mean, my view would be it's probably only going to be worse for, for those smaller institutions. Well, I think certainly on the revenue line, uh, it's going to be you know much more uh, of a headwind for for the regionals and, and the smaller uh, banks. So you know something on the order of uh, high single digit to low double digit declines in net interest income, hurt by lower loan balances and also some more uh, margin compression. Um, but you'll see uh, earnings probably uh, you know should improve dramatically. Uh, the year over the year, you know, Q2 20 was the peak for uh, pandemic charge-offs and uh, lo- well, loss provisions. The 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 you know charge-offs never really materialized. Uh, so you know the macro environment improved dramatically uh, since they took those uh, provisions, and uh, that alone is is going to uh, result, I think, in some you know pretty sharp gains in in the earnings picture. Uh, fortunate for the banks that they've got you know a period here. <laughs> Where they can um, showcase strong uh, earnings numbers uh, before, you know, hopefully getting that uh, improvement in loan growth and, and the margin uh, expansion rather than contraction, uh, you know, heading into next year. So, uh, so I think the regional banks do have, um, you know, a pause here. Uh, I, I think investors should look at the uh, loss reserves and, and say this was, you know, this it, it basically earnings were overly depressed last year, and they'll get some of that back. Uh, this year, uh, but you know the case for banks, I, I think, is is uh, is is good here. It is the the, the uh, interest rates moving a bit higher. I think widely expected the Fed will move off the zero bound by the end of the next year. Credit quality, as you mentioned, we still have we do still have uh, you know another a couple of quarters probably of reverse loss provisioning, um, and uh, you know we've also got the um, capital uh, returns for the large banks. Uh, in particular, that moratorium they had last year for the pandemic. Stephen Bigger, Director of Financial Institutions Research at Argus Research. Good to see you this morning. Thanks for stopping by.